it. The one last thing that we are going to talk about, uh, uh, actually, we have two, two things. One is so-called the read to yourself. Mercury parasymmetry. Mercury parasymmetry. Let's read it again. Mercury parasymmetry, which means you are essentially using mercury, Hg, to measure something about pores. Pore volume, pore size, and porosity. And I'm showing this capillary inserted into liquid, and we probably have experience. If we have glass inserted into water, the liquid water would come up. On the other hand, if we have glass inserted into mercury, the mercury would go down, right? That's what we observed. But essentially, it's for cylindrical capillary, cylindrical, right? A glass tube, for example. Capillary is really a certain radius. And the effective pressure, the effective pressure between inside and outside for the liquid, okay? The difference in the relative pressure is given by high school, I guess, or college physics. We are not going there, but the difference in pressure is minus of two times gamma LV cosine theta over L, R. R means radius for your capillary, for your small tube. Theta is your contact angle between the liquid and your wall of that capillary. Okay, and uh, gamma term is the, I would say, surface tension, right? Between the liquid and the vapor for that, whatever liquid we are using. So we have this relationship. And then, as we said, if we have like glass into water, glass into water. If the glass is clean, the wetting is reasonable, right? Which means the contact angle is smaller than 90 degree and the cosine theta would be, yeah, theta smaller than zero, cosine theta would be positive. Based on this equation, my data P would be negative, which means the inside compared with the planar or flat outside, the pressure is negative. Pressure difference negative, which means inside is lower pressure. That's what drives the glass, sorry, the water up, right? That's what drives the water up, okay, dot P. On the other hand, we said we, we are dealing with similar glass, but the liquid will change to mercury. And the contact angle quite often, mercury likes to beat up. The contact angle quite often higher than 90 degree, which means the cosine theta would be negative. If cosine theta is negative, 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 my delta P would be positive. My delta P is positive, which means inside, inside the tube, the pressure would be higher than outside. That's what caused it to drop down, right? That's what uh, people would observe. And uh, if we are talking about a closed system, by applying pressure. If we're going to use mercury, we're going to force, we're going to force the mercury gradually into different uh, size of pores or capillaries. The pressure difference, right? We're going to, the smaller the pore, which means I have to apply what? Higher pressure in order for my mercury to go in here. The larger the pore, I do not need as much pressure. Okay, that's the essentially the principle for this so-called uh, read to yourself mercury parasymmetry. Okay. Again, this is our Young Laplace equation: delta P equals gamma term cosine term over R minus. Okay, and uh, again we go to our typical material. Mercury, which is our gas. For mercury, we will know the surface tension, people measure it. And contact angle, that's just for simplicity, using a constant value, theta. And we would have this. And as a result, we would calculate. From this equation, we can easily calculate R4 radius as a function of 
delta p. The pressure difference, the pressure you apply, which means the higher the pressure, I can go the higher the delta p applied, the smaller the pores I can fill up with my mercury. The lower the pressure, I can only fill up larger pores. But by counting, by measuring how much mercury I consumed, I won't be able to know. Okay, I'll be able to know how much what's the size that I'm reaching. Make sense? That's the principle. The amount of mercury intruded into the powder gives the cumulative pore volume. Previously, remember, in gas absorption, we are using nitrogen, liquid nitrogen, essentially, or multi-layer absorbed nitrogen, which is essentially liquid nitrogen, to measure the pore volume. Here, we are using another liquid, in this case, mercury, to penetrate, to fill in the pores. Okay, and uh, link that with my applied pressure. Okay, and the feature, of, as the applied pressure increases, the larger pores got filled up first. Because larger pores means R is large, means my delta P is small. When the pressure is small, I fill up first the larger pores. And when the pressure goes higher and higher, I start to fill up smaller and smaller pores. This is opposite to gas absorption. In that case, capillary condensation, whatever, you have monolayer coverage and then multilayer coverage. The lower the pressure, I fill up the smaller pores. You see what I mean? For gas, the lower the pressure, I fill up smaller pores, and then to fill up larger pores, I need multi and multi-layer. I need higher and higher pressure. Here is the opposite. Okay? So, delta P from Again, from zero, which means does not apply any pressure. Okay, the volume, intrusion volume would be zero. And as, I, as we step up the applied pressure, more and more volume got mercury got consumed or got penetrated in there. Okay, and of course, eventually it will be fuel saturation. Typically, in principle, it can be applied to pore size from five nanometer all the way to 200 micron. But in reality, people only use it between 0.1 micron to 200 micron. Essentially for so-called micro pores, for large pores, okay? It's more applicable for solids containing micro pores, for which gas absorption cannot accurately measure. It's kind of like gas absorption and the mercury power symmetry, they complement each other. Gas absorption, if we want really, really large pore to gas, that's almost like as if it's a flat surface. It doesn't really work that way for anything larger than 15 nanometer. But that's where mercury power symmetry can measure them easily. And for mercury power symmetry are not very applicable to, read to yourself, to small pores, to meso pores or micro small pores, because you are going to have to apply what? If this guy you want to probe very small, which means this guy you have to apply really, really high. And for mechanical engineer, it's getting difficult to apply too high pressure. And also the material may start to fail. Your container may start to fail. Make sense? So that's the fundamental principle here. Okay, and we will quickly go here. We have sample, we have tube, and then first you would uh, what? Evacuate, make a vacuum, and then you backfill with mercury and gradually step up your pressure. Okay, when the pressure is low, you start to fill up what? The pores with larger radius, right? And then when the when you further step up from P1 to P2, higher pressure, the smaller pores would gradually get uh, filled in. Okay, the sample data. This one just shows a sample data. Volume versus pore diameter. You start from larger pores. You start first few larger pores, and gradually. Increase volume, start to fill up smaller and smaller pores. For intrusion, 
and for X extrusion. Okay, and here you see the majority of the pores are well. The majority of the pore volume contribution would come from something between, boy, this is 100 nanometer. Well, like close to micron, right? Micron scale. So you see how it complements gas absorption. The, for the 10 nanometer, we are here. Well, you are going to apply a lot of pressure and it is difficult. And quite often you think one, one micron sized pore would be a thousand of a hundred nanometer pore, right? You see what I mean? Because the radius and it goes to the power of three. So yeah, it's different and they complement each other. Okay. And uh, I think 